I'm a former visa officer, and if your visa's been refused, you probably want to know the reason why. Why, after all of that preparation, after all of your planning, after collecting all of those documents and filling out those forms, getting ready to go in there, why after you went in, was your visa refused by the visa officer? Well, if you're asking yourself that question, you may be looking for answers. You may look online, you may search different forums, you may find different agents, maybe the person who helped you fill out your DS-160, but odds are that unless you're talking to someone who actually knows what goes into making those decisions, it's going to be hard to get an accurate answer. If you've not made those decisions, you don't know what the actual metric is. I'm a former visa officer and I did make those decisions. I made over 60,000 60, of them during my time in the US Foreign Service and State Department doing visa interviews in different consulates and embassies around the world. The reason why your visa was refused, if it was 214B, quite simply is because the visa officer was not convinced that you were going to use the visa in an appropriate and legal way. The piece of paper that you've been given most likely tells you something about proving ties to your home country. Yes, that is the way that the regulation for 214B is worded. That doesn't specifically apply to your case. That's one, that's one form that they hand to everyone who they refuse under that clause. The reason, the real reason behind that could be anything. It could be that they just don't trust what you said. Maybe you were just giving answers that were too stilted. They couldn't get any information out of you. If they don't reach the level of confidence in trusting that you are going to use your visa in the appropriate way, then they're going to refuse. They're going to use the leeway and the license that they have to use their judgment to refuse your visa. If there are parties out there that can tell you the exact reason why your visa was refused. If they tell you that they can ask someone at the embassy or the consulate and they're going to get that in inside information, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that that is not true. I know personally of people that have been defrauded by unscrupulous agents that have told them that they have a contact who will tell them why they were refused. Now, what do they do? They do the same kind of thing that psychics and fortune tellers who are fake will do, which is they learn a little bit about you and then they just extrapolate out some extra stuff that's very common and let you know that, okay, this is the reason. So they'll know your case because they filled out your visa application form. They know what your job is. They know if you have a family member in the US and then they'll just tell you, oh yes, yes, I contacted my contact in the in the consulate and they told me it's because of your brother. It's because of your brother in the US, right? It's just information that they already had. They're going to be hard pressed to give you a reason, a factual reason that has to do with your real situation, your real life, if it's not information that you've already given them, right? because they're not actually getting that information from someone on the inside of the consulate. Now, how do I and how do my colleagues at Argo, all of us, former visa officers, the US diplomats who do the visa interviews abroad, how do we diagnose why you were refused in your visa interview? Well, it's not from any insider information that we have. We can't ask people on the inside why you were refused. If we did ask our friends and former colleagues on the inside, they would tell us, no, we're not going to tell you that. That is extremely unethical. We are not going to give that type of information. They take that ethical responsibility very seriously. So how do we do this? How do we help you if we can't get inside the system and see what they actually put in their notes? Well, we draw on our experience, on our long experience. Like I said, I've done 60,000 of these interviews. Our team combined has done over a million visa interviews all around the world, 35 different countries speaking over 10 different languages, every single type of visa that there is. With this level of experience, there comes an ability to have reliable intuition about what's going on in the mind of the visa officer when a decision is made because the regulations are the same worldwide. The training that every visa officer goes through before being sent out to the embassies and consulates is the same. It's the same training course that everyone goes through. The visa officers, in addition to that, are only in their post for a couple years before they're transferred to another post where they're going to be doing the visa interviews. They're trained by visa officers who did the exact same training course and also have been rotated around the world. It's consistent. It's a very consistent rubric, methodology, culture around the visa officers, no matter where you are in the world, that leads them to apply a very consistent standard to the visa applicants that they're interviewing, regardless of the country, that allows us to put ourselves in their shoes. When I ask you what happened in your visa interview, without the commentary, just tell me what happened. What were the questions you were asked and how did you answer them? How did the visa officer respond and what was their next question, right? That 
almost script, movie-like script, is going to tell me so much about what the VISA officer was thinking, what they identified as your weak point, as your strong point, what you may have said that set off alarm bells, red flags, or that may have led them to think, oh, maybe I should issue, where it went wrong. These are things that we know from our long experience with all of our colleagues doing this with the same management, the same norms, the same standards, we can figure out what was going on in the interview. Now, what else do we do? We talk to you about your situation. We talk to you about your plans. We talk to you about your education, about your profession, about your family, about your travels, about your finances. We find out what is the actual information that wasn't presented in your previous visa interview that should be presented in your next visa interview that's going to change that decision that you got before from a refusal to an issuance. So you definitely want to try to identify why you were refused, but that's not the end of the story. What, what do you want just to know the answer to that question? No, you want to know the answer to that question because you want to have a solution that lets you overcome that and get your visa issued the next time. That's where we can help you. If you want to invest in getting your US visa, Find the expertise that's gonna help you. Former visa officers are the only true experts that know what happens in a visa interview. Many other people that are ancillary to the process have a lot of experience maybe with documents, maybe with petitions, maybe with scheduling, but they've not actually sat at the window and experienced what's going on there at the window. Maybe you talk to someone who's, who's attended a visa interview or two or three. Okay, well that's three visa interviews versus hundreds of thousands. Know where to find the right information. Don't put your trust in experts that are not actually going to be getting you what you want. Put your trust where it's deserved in the people that can actually help you get your visa issued. I hope you find us at argovisa.com uh, and you put your trust in us to help you have success at your visa interview.